get a little frightened sometimes when you start to review a game from Atlas because it usually involves a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of imagination. Yeah. We are talking about Abyss Odyssey Extended Dream Edition. Yep. This has made its way to the PS4, and that's exactly where we're playing it. Yep. It's an interesting game, most like a lot of games that I've been playing from Atlas lately. Yep. This is a roguelike, which is very much in vogue right now. It's a 2D scrolling one. It's made with 3D assets and, and some really lovely artwork here. I really like the aesthetics of this game. I thought they were terrific. Even the uh, sequences where the characters would pop up and have discussions back and forth, all of that stuff is just rendered really beautifully it is it's like a you know fairy tale yes. a storybook coming to life mm -hmm. which is very interesting it it is darker than that though yep. well you're like descending into this you, great you abyss are. this this hellacious evil filled with the grotesque monsters and yes. and demons to fight yes it's cartoony though but it does skew dark it's very adult and it's adult a, yeah it's a very adult experience with um, adult themes and stories here that you you try to wrap your mind around but I just find the problem here with this is that I, I didn't have any fun while trying to discover these things mm. so the combat here is not really interesting to me at all I didn't well, have any fun with it something that seems to be pervasive in the roguelikes is that they have cumbersome controls on purpose. The controls challenge you because part of the game conceit is to die yeah. and to start at the top again and to try to get further than you did last time. Right, which and is interesting. Yes, but also frustrating. When I die, I get so frustrated and I just want to throw my controller and like yeah. that is it for me. I am freaking done with this thing. I look for every reason to hate it and that's what was happening here with me while I was playing yeah, it. Yeah, but they do something interesting here. A couple things. Uh, first of all, they give you the ability to transform into some of the enemies that you pick up, you pick yeah. up sort of the, the soul of them. You start off as a female warrior, a mystical warrior with magic powers named Katrian. If she is getting bludgeoned and her health is, is dropping down and you don't have any potions, you can switch over to one of the enemies that you've mm -hmm. picked up and try to advance a little bit further that way, although they seem to be pretty weak and their mechanics are a lot less forgiving even than the, the main character. Yeah. And then when you die as the main character, yeah. you'll become a human character who is trying to avenge and protect and resurrect the character down at one of the sort of temple areas that you have yeah, to get like past. Yeah, there's like a respawn area, yeah. like a shrine. But the humans are incredibly weak, and, so weak and very easy and quick to die, but that gives you like this extra little bonus round of uh, a little time to try to Which survive. Is, even in the first stages, I mean, these skeletons that we're fighting seem to have so much power. Their health meter seems to be way too big for the first enemies that we're taking well, on. Well, once you figure out the routines, you do level up fairly quickly, and you do progress, and you have a choice. You basically can decide to go horizontally or laterally in, in the levels to see if you can that's, unlock some other yeah, stuff like and unlock some weapons and you can purchase better weapons and that's incredibly important just like it is in most roguelikes. Yes, and you find different scrolls and different uh, journal entries that yep. you then can go back and read, which are very interesting, by the way. I took a lot of screenshots <laughs> of my TV. I just kept taking photos of these interesting stories. Just crazy, this, this yeah. lore that they're, they're feeding the, the us. Fiction's as ornate as yeah. the artwork, you know, yeah. and as intricate as the artwork. I think they've done a pretty fantastic job. This is a Chilean company named Ace, and I think they've done a really interesting job. I didn't play the original because it came out on the PS3 and the 360, yeah. I think, a little more than a year ago. I I dug it. I think it's pretty cool. And then, you, you know, I unlocked a monk character who had different abilities. Yeah. I think there's a lot to kind of unravel and enjoy out of this, well, and it's not very expensive. It's true. That's the thing. It's a very inexpensive game where you're getting a lot of time. You get a lot of time, a lot of entertainment here. You just have to really want to consume yeah. it. I feel like it's just too challenging. There's too much of a hurdle for me to overcome. Yes. I see failure in front of me, and I can't see past it. I understand. I mean, yeah. it, it, that frustration, I think, turns off a lot of people. Yeah. What are you going to give Abyss Odyssey extended dream? edition. It's not for me. It's getting 6.5. I liked it quite a bit more than that. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10.